conjugate style home gym setup on a budget. Let's get into it. So guys, today what we're going over is exactly what we just said. Some of the best items that you can buy that are cheap that will allow you to do conjugate style training. Now, whether you're super into conjugate, don't know what it is, don't like it at all. Regardless, all these things are going to add versatility and variety to your workouts, which is what, you know, home gyms are all about, right? Whenever we see stuff like that, that's what gets us excited. So, um, I've always really enjoyed training conjugate <clears throat> and you know, one of the things that I kind of built my home gym around, uh, a lot of this stuff is just, you know, cheap add ons that, uh, you know, sometimes get overlooked. Um, and I wanted to make sure that I could train, uh, if I wanted to do, you know, max effort, uh, with bands chains, changing different things. So I'm going to show you guys what I have, uh, in, in terms of like a budget conjugate West side barbell setup. Um, cause I've seen other videos out there on this, but it's like, you yeah. know, way over the top and totally unrelatable to your average Joe like you and me. So we'll go with the first one, kind of a no brainer. You probably already saw it. Obviously the easiest, cheapest thing you're going to be able to do conjugate style training with is bands. And the thing with bands, just get a variety of them, get some really tough ones. Um, I actually got the set from West, West Side Barbell. They're a little bit more expensive. I think they're like 150 bucks. You get a ton of bands with it. And I mean, with that, you're pretty well set. Um, but you can get your bands from anywhere. You get them from Amazon, uh, whatever you like. Um, I, I do have them break somewhat frequently. Um, so I think it is worth, you know, spending a hundred bucks and getting a nice set. Um, but bands are great. You know, they can, you can essentially, you can do everything with bands alone. You can add them onto your main compound lifts. You can add them onto accessory movements. You can add them onto anything and it just makes them more fun and a different stimulus um, and conjugate, right? So. Uh, yeah, so bands are gonna be number one. Now, number two, I have over here, we have uh, we have chains. So, chains are another great option because, again, let's bring you over here, uh, and I'll show you the chains. They're kind of buried behind the weight plates, but um, yeah, chains are one of those things where you know you can really change the stimulus. Um, I forget where I got these. It might have been from Rogue. Kind of expensive, but. Um, some better spots would be strong arm sport. If you guys are in Canada, I know they sell weightlifting chains, belt bells of steel as well. Um, I don't know if any of the other guys like Amstaff or, uh, Synergy sell chains. They might. So we're checking it out. I'll have links to those in the video description. Uh, chains are nice because again, you know, it, uh, it, it makes it feel like a totally different movement. And you know, if your sticking point is throughout the top of the lift, or if you just want to train that harder, um, you know, to switch it up from week to week then chains are a great way to allow you to do that. Now, what I would recommend, since we're talking about basements, and I guess for a garage too, if you're lifting the chains directly up and down on the concrete, like it, say for how my platform is set up, typically the chains will bounce off the ground, incredibly loud, very noisy. Um, I saw basement Brandon, uh, Brandon Campbell, he had some kind of sock or something that went around the chains. So, I mean, you could do that, or you just throw some towels down where your chains are gonna hit. Um, just something to, to keep in mind. If you are gonna be using them a lot, they are incredibly loud. And if you're working out when you're hungover, doing, using chains, it just makes it that much more torturous. So yeah, chains are great. Cheap-ish investment. Um, you know, you don't need a ton of them. You can get as crazy as you want with them, but I find, um, I just have one set of 40 pound, I think they, well, yeah, it's probably 20 or 40 pounds uh, on each side. I think it's 40 pounds together. I think it's 20 pounds on each side. Um, and that's fine. That's fine. You know, I can adjust the height of them. Um, so if I want them to stay, you know, well, obviously the whole point of them is to, you know, they hit the ground, they release and come back up. But you can you can mess around with the, uh, with the adjustments on them. So it's like you're lifting more chain or less chain kind of thing. Um, and again, something you can use on your main compound, something you can use on, um, you know, every exercise that you want to throw them on. All right, so next up, <clears throat> This is a cool piece. A lot of you probably have one already. Uh, it's just called a bench block. So this is from benchblocks.com. You can actually get these on Amazon. They're pretty cheap, or at least they were when I got this. I think it was like 40 bucks, um, something like that. And it doesn't seem like much, but it's cool because it allows you to, it's essentially, I mean, how you could do a board press by yourself. Um, the one thing with this is just be careful because if you do get stuck and it's way above your safeties, then that can get kind of awkward. So just make sure you can either dump the weight or put the safety arms up a little bit higher. Um, but yeah, so these are great. It gives you a lot of bench variation. You can do your close grip with this. You can do your main compounds with this. Um, if you have a shoulder injury or you know you wanna work the, the top section of the lift more, 
what I find I do a lot of with this is I'll do um, like a max effort set, max effort set, maybe with something like this. And then when I do my back offs or whatever, then I'll take the block away and uh, work it like that. Not all the time, but sometimes. And it's a nice way of, you know, getting that high end uh, maximum effort work in without the stress on the shoulders, which is kind of the whole point of conjugate is to always stay ready at all times. Um, and I mean, depending on how you set up your programming, um, you can either, yeah, it's, it's really like a, a conjugate program is kind of you, whatever you want it to be. Right. Um, so you can do more exercises, you can do less exercises, you can do more variations, you can do less, you know, have a plan going in right now. I'm working with, um, with Burley Hawk on uh, programming, one of the strongest guys on the planet. Um, and it's a pretty clean, simple setup. Um, I won't get too into detail on that right now. <clears throat> We're just going over um, different pieces and things that work for me. Um, so those are definitely the three biggest things. Um, so bands, chains, the bench block. Uh, the next is, I pull them up, but I can't. Or this one I can't. This is gonna be necessary. Band picks, band picks. Get everything that you can with added band picks because why not? It, uh, it just allows you to throw bands on it that much easier. You don't have to do the dumbbell thing. Um, so yeah, having band pegs, uh, you know, if you don't even have them on your rack, I mean, you could drill holes and just order the band peg. Um, and that's gonna be, you know, that's gonna be fine for the most part. Um, yeah, so I mean, conjugate style training is about just adding in different variations and different types of lifts. So the next thing we can go over is uh, different uh, barbells that are gonna allow you to do different exercises. And I think some really great ones um, are like a football football bench bar, like a multi-grip bar. That's gonna, you know, give you weeks of going away from a regular bar, lifting a little bit range, different range of motion. If you don't have dumbbells, for example, it's a nice way to, uh, to do like a neutral grip uh, press, which is kind of cool. Uh, I think most of the better ones are angled because that's really how you should be doing it. But <clears throat> um, yeah, either way, so stuff like that. Um, I, I think the transformer uh, squat bar, that's definitely been a piece I've been having my eyes on for a long time. Um, one day we'll get it, but um, just stuff like that that allows you to do different types of movements. It's not only important in terms of conjugate style training, it's important for a home gym. Um, just so you don't get bored. Uh, and you know, with that, of course, there's always the, the main, the staples, the pause squats, the box squats, the, you know, whatever. Um, I find what, what works best for me for box squats in terms of like a budget setup is just simply pulling my bench out and just squatting right onto that. I'm sure a lot of guys do that. You could do that, you could get a milk crate, you could beef it up, uh, or you could simply build a box. The boxes that I've seen, like the plyo ones that you would squat to, they're hundreds of dollars. So I don't know, I can't really make, it's tough for me to justify that cost for something I'm just gonna be you know sitting on every few weeks, you know, one or two times. Um, so yeah, stuff like that doesn't really make sense, but, um, and you know, different pieces like the belt squat where we can do a bunch of different things with it. If we want to get away from back squatting, take the pressure off the back and, you know, do things like that, then that's always good. Um, yeah, so that's basically, uh, my best tips and tricks for doing a kind of a budget style, uh, conjugate setup in your home gym. And just making sure that you have the space for everything too, right? Like if you're gonna be doing a lot of standalone stuff, you don't wanna spend all your time changing a rack out to bench and changing your, you know. The, the way I like to do the my workouts is I'll do all the assistance stuff first, then I'll do the uh, the max effort lifts. Um, and then it kind of doubles as like a warm up, so it's just even more efficient. Um, I've found to do it this way. Um, but yeah. So I think that's basically it, guys. If you have any other, um, you know, tricks or hacks or ideas, let me know that down below in the comment section. Um, I'm just trying to think here. I'm pretty sure we covered mostly everything. Mostly everything. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think what I'll do is uh, maybe in another video, if you guys did like this one, then I'll go over, you know, my conjugate setup just as an average, you know, home gym guy, uh, how I like to program it. Like I said, working with Mr. Burley Hall. Ha, blah, 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 blah. Mr. Burley Hawk. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's a cool setup. So uh, if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you subscribe to the channel. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. That is going to wrap up for the video today. Make sure to leave a like if you're interesting, entertaining, or informative, or for Homer over here. And we'll catch you next one, guys. Check it out. Great, great.